All right, afternoon, guys. My name's Nick Shahowski. I'm with Robopack. I live outside of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I want to showcase the compact to series model of Stretch Wrapper we have today. So, the uh, thing about Robopack is we make all of our equipment in Italy um, and then we stock it in Duluth, Georgia, which is outside of Atlanta. Our models right now uh, typically is about a 12 week lead time for something new. We do try to keep heavy inventory for Stretch Wrapper, the, the turntable machines. We do have a min max with the Compacta 6 in stock. Um, just for talking purposes today, we'll go through the control panel and icons, um, how to run the machine, how to thread the autofilm cutoff on this. And what's nice is I have some reference videos of how to thread the film carriage, what the icons mean, and how to thread the autofilm cutoff. Because how to thread this and how to thread the autofilm cutoff are the two most common things you're going to get asked. Um, it does, this autofilm cutoff has, it runs on air, so it's going to be, it's going to run at six bar 1.3 CFM. When you're sizing these machines, as we were talking a little bit ago, is send me pictures of the, the product mix, if there's any concerns, and then all you need to ask for these machines is what's the min-max diameter. That's it. You just got to get it through this ring. So just one note on this ring is the reason why the min-max is so important is because when, when you go higher, so it doesn't necessarily mean you can fit a square block through this. There's going to be an arc to it. So I'm going to show you a chart and how to read it. It's kind of, it's kind of funky how to read the chart, but I'll show you that. Um, so let's take a, a, a look at the controls here. So this, uh, really basic, there's, there's five knobs or buttons here that we need to look at. You got the e-stop, so the potentiometer speeds up and down the ring. Three, four, or five. So what that means is if I tap this, it's going to go three, four, or five. Or if you just hold the foot pedal, it's going to do just constant revolutions until you take your foot off. Very easy. Um, this icon will home it, will home the film carriage if it has some kind of break somewhere. And then the last item here, this uh, actuates the uh, auto film cutoff. And then you thread it, hit it again, and it'll pull it back. Five or 10 inch film is optional on these units. What's called flush core. If the cardboard, the corrugate is sticking out, that's an exposed core. So you want a flush core with these. If you open the, the, the carriage door open, there's an interlock on this. So you just heard the, um, the air go off. Once you close that door, you need to tap it to turn the machine back on. So with three revolutions, I'm going to tap it. Or my foot's off. It's going to do one more rev. Another thing is, if you're having issues with the auto cutoff and it's it's still um, not providing a clean tail, there's no intelligence to the pre-stretch of the film on this carriage. So on some stretch wrappers, you have pre-stretch associated with the film, so you can stretch it more. This doesn't have any intelligence associated with it. So the more you turn down this knob, the more tightness or containment force you're going to get. The looser. So there's a sweet spot. So there's really no uh, rule to what to tell a customer of how tight to turn that down. If they're putting corrugated cases through it and it's crushing the box, tell them to back off the tightness. With, with wood, with a lot of more rigid things, it, it really doesn't matter how, how uh, tight that film is. But if you're getting uh, premature film breaks or something, that could be a reason to it, is that, that tension knob. Okay. So, you see it, there's minimal working dimensions here. So for like the nine, the minimal working dimension is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. 
The reason why that is, is when it makes that revolution, it needs some meat to grab onto. If it doesn't have enough meat or material to grab onto, it'll just parachute. So with horizontal machines, it's not so much the max, because we can figure the max, it's always the min. The min always seems to be the fly in the ointment, is they always, customers always want to put something smaller than they can through the machine, um, thinking that this machine can do anything, and it's always the min. Same thing with this, what we call this right here is the bridge gap. So um, this distance right here, if it's not touching, this sounds really, uh, you know, rudimentary that someone would know this, but if you don't have it long enough to touch both sides of these tables, they would literally have to hold it in the air. So you have to have something long enough um, for, for both sides to capture this bridge gap. So then the way you read this, this is the center line. So I have a product Nick, I have a product that's 20 inches wide, that's 12 inches high. 20 inches wide would be 10 on each side. So you read this. So I go here and here. So 10 and then, what did I say, 14 high? Nope, it wouldn't fit in the compact of six, so you'd have to go up to the compact of nine. So that's how you read that. You go up the center line on each side. So then the next logical question is going to be, how do I get support for this machine? So we have a phone tech line. Or the easiest way, let's see what happens when it should come up. Yeah. So service.usa at robopack.com. You email the serial number of the machine, contact information, and the issue that you're having. So you'll get an answer back in 24 hours sooner than that. But um, we always ask for the serial number, which is right here in the back. So you're going to a customer and they're pushing back and they're saying, Italian made company, we're not going to buy it. They have no parts. They have no service. We have a lot of techs. We have a lot of stock. We have about $2 million, $2.5 million in stock down in Atlanta. Um, so yeah, we, we have more than enough parts to satisfy customers. This machine in 10 years will use less than $1,000 in parts. There's nothing to these machines. You have a belt and a bearing. That's, that's pretty much going to be your wear item. You might replace some of these rollers. They'll, people get pretty aggressive and slam down on these, but um, on these rotating rings, there's not many moving parts. The blade, probably, there's, there's not much to these. Um, so yeah, so service and support uh, comes out of Atlanta, same with our parts. Customer's gonna ask you how you thread the film. We have a video for that for the auto film cutoff a video for how to thread this film carriage because it's a little complex the first time you do it. How the control panel works. All right, now we got some fun application stuff. So you have a variable frequency drive, a motor, maybe for your parts department, Ray and I were talking about maybe looking at a machine like this so that you guys can take a VFD or a motor a kit, put it on a pad, and then you have handles on it that you put into a case, and then it goes to a case sealer. I'm crossing my, yeah, here we go. Cross my fingers, the speed was good. So here's what I'd say about this market. You guys have electric motor shops everywhere. We all do, right? Uh, on the electric, there's a ton in St. Louis. Um, the electric motor shops all have VFDs. They're all replacing bearings and motors. Especially this time of year, it gets hot in these facilities. They're all replacing motors and VFDs. 
This is a great application. This is called a suspension pack machine because it's suspended the packaging right here. Why would you sell or how would you sell against this? You guys know void fill? You know those pillows, air pillows? And the, um, um, there's, there's other kind of void fill materials out there. Uh, it's expensive, it's hard to get. So why you would promote that suspension pack over that kind of void fill is you're saving them um, uh, on the consumables. And the cool thing about you guys is you can tell the customer, hey, Mr. or Miss customer, we don't sell the consumables, so we're looking out for your best interest. So we're, we're hands off. We're just showing you the best solution right now. So where, whereas the consumable guys are looking to, you know, gain your consumable business, we're trying to show you an option right now to reduce your cost. So what you're trying to do with, with a solution like this is you're trying to eliminate the corrugated because the, the big cost is the corrugated, right? And the cases. So if you can, you can eliminate their corrugated spend to go to stretch film, that right there, that amount of film, four ounces of film, 50 cents maybe, a case is probably buck 25, something like that, a buck. All right, I'm gonna bring this up. This is something that would not wrap well. So I get asked, um, a lot of times with automotive bumpers, they're still doing it by hand at the chrome when they're doing the big chrome, uh, uh, you know, mid-size and heavy truck. Not everything is good through a, a horizontal orbital. Because of that convex that, that of this, sometimes the convex doesn't like to wrap well because if it has a really big arc to it, all that material wants to slide to the middle. So sometimes that's what I'm saying. Maybe take a picture if you're questioning. Um, so just to kind of wet your whistle on, on what's another booming market segment is the cabinet industry. Because of that residential boom right now with housing, there's two separate machines I'm showing you. This one first. So what happens is, there's two rolls and then a ceiling bar will seal the end. You can do bubble, foam, poly, whatever. So now it's creating a bag more or less. And now the stretch wrapper captures all sides of it. So the cabinet industry, windows and doors, that's the market for this. Because what's happening is with the shortage in trucking, now you used to be able to use dedicated carriers, right? You always, you know, Joe and Mike's window company always had the same carrier. But now with the, the truck market being so short, they got to get these LTLs they've never used before. Well, these LTLs are throwing their stuff around and damaging it. These cabinets are 50, 60 grand, and they're getting a lot of damage right now. So they need to add protection and eliminate labor. So you're automating this process with that foam and bubble applicator. So what you're doing is you're automating it because they can't find labor and you're adding protection. So yeah, pretty much, I mean, this is, when we talk about semi-automatics, we're talking about machines that really don't have like conveyors with them. So semi-automatic, no conveyors, automatic conveyors. Yeah, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, yeah, we're at a half an hour right now. I don't like to go too much longer. If you guys want questions, uh, let me know.